Welcome to Applied Flow Technologies AFT Impulse 6 Pipe Sectioning Video Tutorial. In this video tutorial, we will discuss how to control how long your AFT Impulse model will take to return a solution. As was reviewed in the AFT Impulse Quick Start Tutorial, the method of characteristics is used to predict how transient pressure waves propagate throughout the system. In order to apply the method of characteristics to a system, you must set up a characteristic grid in which all of the pipes can be broken into an integer number of section lengths. A pressure wave must be able to move from inlet to outlet of each section within your model in the same amount of time, so each pipe section must have the same L over A value, where L is the section length and A is the wave speed. Assuming all of the pipes have the same wave speed, then all of the section lengths will be of equal length. The Section Pipes tool with an AFT impulse automates this process for you. The number of sections N that a particular pipe is broken into can be calculated using the following equation. N sub I equals L sub I divided by A sub I times delta T, where L is the length of a particular pipe, A is the wave speed of the fluid in a particular pipe, and delta T is a system time step, which is equal to the length of time for a pressure wave to move through a given pipe section. A number of factors come into play when determining the wave speed of the fluid in a pipe. These include the fluid properties, as defined within the system properties window, as well as how you define your pipes. AFT Impulse provides several system fluid modeling options. The fluid bulk modules of elasticity and fluid density are important parameters required for determining wave speed. They can be obtained by using any of these fluid modeling options or by specifying them on your own with a user-specified fluid. In this model, we have a 10-foot suction line between a reservoir and the pump. There is a short 6-inch connector pipe between the discharge of the pump and an expansion to the main pipeline. The main pipeline is 990 feet, delivering water to a reservoir at the top of a 200-foot hill. The intent of this model is to study a pump trip event. However, this video tutorial will not be concerned with the system hydraulics as much as how the method of characteristics works. Using the fluid properties, the pipe properties, and how the pipe is structurally supported, AFT Impulse can calculate an estimated wave speed for each pipe in your model using standard methods. Alternatively, you can manually calculate and enter a user-specified wave speed for each pipe throughout your model. After the model is fully defined and the pipe's lengths and wave speeds have been defined for each pipe throughout your model, then the characteristic grid must be set up by figuring out how to break each pipe into an integer number of sections where all pipe sections have the same L over A value. Section Pipes window automates this process with the goal being to find the best trade-off in sectioning round-off error and runtime. In order for all of the pipes in the system to be broken into an integer number of sections and in order for each section to have the same L over A, typically the section length must be very small. This would require very long runtimes. In order to reduce the number of sections and therefore the runtime, one might be tempted to break the pipes into a fractional number of sections. Because fractional pipe sections are not possible, one has to accept a round off error in order to get all the pipes with the same time step. The traditional approach is to recognize that the wave speed is the least certain parameter and to allow an error in wave speed to be introduced up to 15%. The wave speed error is specified in the advanced search settings field of the section pipes window and AFT impulse uses the default value of 10%. This error does not directly correlate to modeling error. It is simply the maximum acceptable round-off error in the various wave speeds used throughout the model. By default, AFT Impulse will search up to five sections in the shortest pipe in the model to determine the best sectioning options, assuming all pipes have the same wave speed. 
The first step in setting up the characteristic grid is to identify the controlling pipe. This is typically the shortest pipe in your model. Once the controlling pipe is determined, the time step to be used throughout the system is calculated. The time step is derived from the shortest controlling pipe in the model, assuming all pipes have the same wave speed. After the time step has been determined, all of the other pipes in the system can be sectioned. The first row in the search results table uses one pipe section in the controlling pipe and assuming all pipes have the same wave speed. This single section can ideally fit into each of the other pipes in the model an integer number of times. The first two columns show the length and wave speed defined within each pipe in the model. The third column shows the ideal number of sections in each pipe allowing for fractional values. The fourth column shows the integer number of sections after rounding to the nearest whole number. In order to obtain an integer number of sections per pipe rather than a fractional number of sections, we adjust the wave speed by some percentage, thus returning a modified wave speed. The impedance is a parameter required for solving the method of characteristics and is outside the scope of this tutorial. If you break the controlling pipe into more sections, then you will get lower round-off error in the results of your analysis, however it will take longer to return a solution. Notice that there are over 2,000 sections in pipe P2, which will result in a long runtime. Assuming we are interested in the transient results for a 30 second simulation duration, this model would require over a quarter million time steps. At each of these time steps, a calculation will be performed for each pipe station throughout your model. If you have a pipe broken into four sections, you will have five computation stations, an inlet, an outlet, and three intermediate stations. Remember that P2 in this model has over 2,000 pipe sections. Using the hardware specifications of your computer along with a log of past runtimes, the estimated runtime for your model can be predicted. The runtime for a simulation is related directly to the total number of computations required. The number of computations depends on the total number of time steps and the total number of pipe sections. Notice that the Water Hammer Assistant is recommending we change pipe P2 in order to reduce the runtime. As is suggested in this window, we will ignore the shortest pipe later on in this tutorial. The output window lets you review the transient max min results as well as the steady state pipe and junction results, junction summaries, event messages, and if there are any warnings from the analysis. For this video tutorial, we will disregard the displayed warning message as we are focusing on how pipe section works with the method of characteristics. Notice our maximum transient pressure during this 30 second simulation is about 130 PSIG and occurs at the inlet station 0 of pipe P2. Let's also capture the transient max min pressure profile for this simulation. Let's copy this graph data and paste it into Excel in order to compare it to the next graph that we will be generating. Now switch into Microsoft Excel to paste the data. Now that we have pasted the initial data which included the short pipe, we will now go back to AFT Impulse to modify the model in order to generate new results which will be pasted beside the initial max min pressure data so results can be compared after the modifications. Remember the runtime for a simulation is related directly to the total number of computations required. The number of computations depends on the total number of time steps and the total number of pipe sections. If the controlling pipe is very short, this requires more sections than all of the other pipes in the model.
In this model, there is a short pipe connected to the discharge of the pump in order to connect an expander to the downstream piping. When considering the wave speed in a fluid such as water, many thousands of feet per second, the difference in the time it takes for the pressure wave to travel through a half a foot long pipe compared to a 10 foot pipe is very small. Therefore, changing the short pipes in your model to a common length will often have a negligible impact on the results of the analysis. However, changing the short pipes in your model to a common longer length will greatly reduce the number of sections the longer pipes must be broken into and will greatly reduce the runtime of the model. There is an exponential relationship between runtime and the number of sections in the model. Deleting P4 will change our controlling pipe length from half a foot to 10 foot, which increases the controlling pipe length by a factor of 20. However, this reduces the runtime by a factor of 400. In this model, let's simply delete pipe P4 and the area change junction J5 and see how this impacts the model. Notice that now the maximum number of pipe sections is only 100 rather than 2000. Notice that now we have just over 13,000 time steps rather than a quarter million. With a greatly reduced number of computations, we have greatly reduced the estimated runtime. Notice that the maximum transient system pressure is still about 130 PSIG and again occurs at the pump outlet. Again, let's review the transient maximum pressure profile for this simulation. Now let's copy the data and paste it into the Excel spreadsheet so that we can compare results of the case that had the short pipe. Now switching back to the Excel spreadsheet, the data has now been pasted into the spreadsheet and the graph was pre-programmed to automatically plot the data once pasted. Notice that the maximum and minimum transient pressure profiles for these two systems are nearly identical. When using one section in the controlling pipe results in excessive wave speed error greater than 10 to 15 percent, and when using more than one section results in excessively long run times, the next best option is to modify the model. Here are a few examples of changes you might make to your model. Number one, make all the short pipes in the model a common longer minimum pipe length. Number two, remove unnecessary junctions, especially when they do not cause a reflection, and combine the pipes. Number three, neglect the short pipes altogether. This concludes the AFT Impulse 6 pipe sectioning video tutorial. Thank you for watching our AFT Impulse 6 pipe sectioning video tutorial. You can find many other video tutorials on our video tutorial webpage, aft.com slash learning center slash video tutorials.